After going through a tough war, it can be really hard to adjust to regular life. So it's no surprise that someone might start feeling lost and lonely, not knowing their purpose anymore. And these feelings can lead to depression and laziness. But what if these feelings eventually reach a breaking point and turn into violence? What happens then? Even though Taxi Driver was made about nearly 50 years ago, its themes still feel relevant today. The movie really nails the feelings of existential pain, trauma, and alienation, and it also does a great job of addressing loneliness, which is something many of us struggle with but might not want to admit. Travis Bickle is undoubtedly one of the most iconic characters in cinema history, a man who fought in the Vietnam War, then came back and became a taxi driver, having a hard time getting things back on track, has no friends, no purpose and just no motivation to do anything about it. It's like he's stuck in a rut and can't seem to find a way out. But his encounter with two women leaves a profound impact on him. One of them is Betsy, a young woman who works in a politician's election campaign. At first, Travis seems to like her and they flirt a bit, but his awkward behaviors push her away. The other one is a little girl named Iris, a prostitute. As soon as Travis finds out about her situation, he wants to rescue her from that life. And throughout the movie, we see Travis's weird relationship with these two women. But above all else, we witness Travis's loneliness. Loneliness has followed me my whole life, everywhere. In bars and cars, sidewalks, stores, everywhere. There's no escape. I'm God's lonely man. Travis is quite a lonely man, and he's fully aware of it. He is socially awkward, and that's why meeting new people is tough for him. As a result, he spends most of his life in solitude and lost in his own thoughts. But is it good to be isolated with your own thoughts, especially after going through something intense as war? Is it possible that spending too much time alone could be harmful to someone's mental health? Blaise Pascal once said, All of humanity's problems stem from man's inability to sit quietly in a room alone. And there comes a time when a person is all alone, and in that solitude, they truly meet themselves. But this meeting isn't always a pleasant one. It's like a storm of questions crashing down upon them, swirling in their mind. Why am I here? Why am I alone? What's the purpose of it all? And in the midst of this existential chaos, they find themselves in the existential pain, grappling with suffering. That's why we all yearn to break free from that haunting loneliness that lingers in our souls. Pascal uses the example of a king who turned to all sorts of pleasures to escape his solitude. Similar to Pascal's analogy of the king, Travis copes with his loneliness by turning to alcohol, drugs, and his job as a taxi driver. He's out there on the roads even at night because he just can't sleep and doesn't want to be stuck alone with his thoughts. But even as a taxi driver, he still can't escape that feeling of loneliness. It might seem like he gets to interact with different people, but in reality, it's actually quite an isolated job. He's just an observer, kind of hidden away, and people don't even care about him most of the time. It's like he's looking at their lives through that rearview mirror. Even if the easiest solution for loneliness is to socialize, sometimes it's not that simple for everyone, especially for Travis. He really tries to get close to people, especially women, but his behavior comes off as strange and erratic. And the interesting thing is, both of these important figures in Travis's life are women. And actually, the whole story starts with a woman. The writer Paul Schrader revealed that he actually drew inspiration from his own experiences while writing the script. Like Travis, he battled with alcohol addiction and depression at some point in his life and he admits that the major reason for his depressive state was a woman who left him. So it is not surprising that Travis's troubled relationships with female characters are so evident in the movie. But why does Travis care so much about the lives of these two women? Why does he act as a sort of savior for them when he can't fix his own life? Carl Jung's hero archetype provides a better understanding of Travis's situation. Jung claims that inside every human being, especially in men, there is a desire to be a hero. Some people have an urge to play the savior role in others' life and fix things that are broken. That's why Travis wants to play the role of savior in the lives of these two women. He even designs his own hero costume. And when you look his outfit, it's obvious that he's trying to look like a cowboy. Shit, you're a real cowboy. Cowboys have had a huge impact on American pop culture, especially in the 20th century. When you think of a hero back then, a cowboy often comes to mind. And those cowboy stories are usually about a cowboy saving the woman he loves from the bad guys. Travis also wants to rescue these two women from the authorities who control them. But to really get Travis's character, we gotta dig into his past. That's where we'll find the real depth of who he is. As I mentioned earlier, 
Travis is a war veteran and the war has had a profound impact on him, more than we might realize. Many veterans who were part of the Vietnam War still carry its trauma even after 50 years. They are suffering from violence, insomnia, and feeling disconnected from life. And Travis is no exception. He goes through all these struggles too. At the end of the movie, Travis tries to assassinate the politician Palantine. His decision to cut his hair in the mohawk style just before the plot indicates that he couldn't escape the lasting effects of the Vietnam War, because this haircut was used by the soldiers in Vietnam before they went on suicide missions. Travis was dead set on carrying out the assassination, but just when he's about to do it, a bodyguard spots him and he runs away. He realizes that he missed his chance to save Betsy, so instead he decides to rescue Iris and kills the pimp that forced her to work for him. So in the end, Travis achieves his goal and becomes a savior. He is heralded by the press as a heroic vigilante, not prosecuted for the murders, and received a thankful letter from Iris's parents. But Martin Scorsese pointed out that it actually highlights the corruption of a society that glorifies a disturbed individual as a hero. Because if Travis had carried out his first plan and became successful in his assassination attempt, he would probably have been labeled as a terrorist. He's simply a man with mental issues, in a time where mental health was still incredibly taboo, because a decade before the film was shot, it was still legal to institutionalize people. So now you have got a war veteran who not only feels isolated, but also he can't bring himself to communicate his loneliness. He's actually aware that there is something wrong with the way he's living or the way he feels, but he continues to feel himself outcast. And for him, this ends up with two choices. It's either his problem or the world's. And as so very many do, especially at that time, he chooses the latter. Someday a real rain will come and wash all the scum off the streets. Now I see it clearly. My whole life is pointed in one direction. I see that now. Taxi Driver still holds its influence even today, and it actually inspired many other films and pioneered the concept of the anti-hero in cinema. An anti-hero is different from the typical hero. Instead of being all charismatic and having all the answers, they're often flawed and troubled. Even if Travis tries to be a hero, deep down, he's more of an anti-hero. And unlike classic heroes, the characters like him can do something different. They can make us empathize. When you look at the screen, you see a kind of reflection of your own troubles. In Travis's case, he shows us a character we fear to become and marks a point in later stages. A point where all that trauma and loneliness can change a person into something they don't want to be. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a comment, give a like, and click to subscribe. Your support will greatly help the mysterious algorithm work its magic. And if you'd like to support me personally, you can join the channel by using the join button. See you next time.